there's been an allegation made by an individual who has been making some allegations about our state and federal government for a long time to a lot of people. And uh, I'm here basically to answer questions that you might have about this issue. I think that I don't particularly think we're here for any newsworthy event, uh, but uh, because of the fact that it involves the gaming industry, I assume that's why it's an interesting issue uh, to the press. And uh, basically, that, that is why I'm here today. Um, I will say that uh, um, this all boils down to a quote-unquote misuse of a wampum card, a marketing technique that's used by the casino industry to get people to uh, play more in their casinos. Um, at the time of this particular quote-unquote allegation, because there's no alleged wrongdoing, but at the time of this allegation, it states that, uh, do you remember, Alan, this was a letter this particular gentleman uh, wrote to me, uh, do you remember when you were a state legislator uh, that, uh, that uh, you played at Foxwoods under the name of Alan Gold? Well, the last time I was a legislator was 1992. So, to be honest with you, I didn't remember the situation until he brought it up. And then, I didn't get his point. Uh, in, in those days, uh, to get a quote-unquote wampum card, which is the marketing card you have to sign up for, people would say, uh, if you sat at a table, please take one of our marketing cards uh, and sign here. You know, put your name down here. Not sign, excuse me, just put your name down here. And interestingly enough, I, I recently asked someone if they would give me the back of the typical card. Uh, this one is from one of the Connecticut gaming institutions. And uh, I won't read the whole thing. We'll give, it, uh, give you a copy of it. And it very clearly says on it, in line four, uh, that, quote, identification is required when you redeem points and membership is non-transferable. So what this says is that if you want to use this for their marketing program, you have to show ID. Now let me state unequivoc unequivocally, I have never had a fake ID in my life from the date I got a driver's license at age 16. And this is a, and I'm just going to read right from the back of the club, uh, card here, club membership in titles. This is a marketing use of a gaming institution and a gaming entity to get people to play more and to, I guess, have goodwill in, in their particular um, gaming facility. No more and no less than that. So we're talking about something that happened uh, nearly 20 years ago where I was a member of the state legislature I regarded my privacy very highly. I was concerned with identity theft. And I also was concerned that someone could draw some type of a distinction that I might be biased towards the tribal nation. If you remember that this was the time casino gaming was coming into the state of Connecticut, and someone could construe as a state legislator, maybe because I play there. And this may not have been of any real concern, but to me it was that maybe I could be biased because I play in that particular institution. I just didn't want to have any type of semblance of any type of bias for or against the Indian nations. I just wanted to play recreationally as I have had played in my adult life. I rarely go to the casino anymore because I don't have time to go to a casino anymore. This year, for example, I have gone to a gaming facility once and that was prior to my running for office. And that time, I was on a weekend vacation with a friend of mine and his family from Florida. And we went on a trip and we met each other in, in Las Vegas. And we also went to a lot of shows. We went and had dinner. We thoroughly enjoyed ourselves, as by the way, most people in the state of Connecticut. The last time I, I checked, the one of the casinos boasts they get 25,000 people a day. By my numbers, that's nine or 10 million people a year, three times the population of the state of Connecticut. So obviously, there are many people that play 
probably most of the times anonymously. They don't use a quote unquote marketing card or, or a wampum card. The only reason that I took advantage of it is that the, uh, the folks that work there always, at least in the old days, I can't speak now because I, I, I have gone so rarely to Connecticut facilities, but back then, their marketing technique, and I guess they were developing their database in the early days, they wanted everybody they could, could get their hands on to have a card so that they could send them promotions in the mail, et cetera, so that they'd come back and play more often. It's as innocent as that. But maybe I can put it into perspective. I have a card from the last time I played, and you might note that it says Alan Schlesinger on it. Maybe this now will take care of the fact that we've remedied this situation, and maybe we can move on to some important issues like the war in Iraq, like the, the turbulence in the Middle East, like social security. However, I'm here for your questions, as long as they may last. And, but I also, I also have with me my Blockbuster card in case anyone is concerned with the Blockbuster promotions that they uh, take advantage of also. So if there's concern over any of my promotional cards and the ad cards that these marketing folks put out, I can show you that now I have Alan Schlesinger on all these promotional materials. Now I'd like to now refer to uh, Richard Foley who is going to comment a little bit about the allegation and the individual bringing the allegation. And again, I do. We'll listen to you. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about it. And and again. And again, yes. And this is this is not the wampum card because I haven't played there. And this is the most recent one when I played uh, this year. The one from when I played this year. Um, and uh, uh, also, I, we, can we pass out, uh, available to you, is the back of a typical card which says that you need identification to use this card. And by the way, this was only in the old days, um, and that's why I guess uh, this gentleman, uh, he must have a very good memory or he must have some access to some file, but uh, nowadays you need an ID card to get a quote-unquote wampum card. So I guess they've changed their, but in the, in the days he's talking about 15 years ago, um, they would just uh, pass them out. As a matter of fact, you didn't even have to move from wherever you were playing. They would just come to you and give you a card. Are you sure? No, I would prefer, I would prefer you go into this. Now, very quickly. Very quickly. The uh, gentleman who, was, who was, uh, started this ball rolling is a gentleman named uh, Brad Beecher. Uh, Mr. Beecher used to work at the one of the casinos. Uh, Mr. Beecher, uh, we have copies of, res of emails that were sent back and forth to numerous people. Uh, basically, the entire Western world has been subject to his email list, including many of you in this room. Uh, he has been a, a, a person who is a terminated as an employee at the casino. He filed a lawsuit against them that was dismissed. We have a copy of that dismissal here. This is a disgruntled individual who has nothing to do but grind an ax, and that is what his, he is doing right now. And uh, this gentleman should be ashamed of himself, and I would hope that perhaps, though well, Mr. Morano was a very busy man these days, perhaps he should be talking to Mr. Beecher for a little while, amongst his other duties. And that's all, and we have those documents here. Sorry, for you. Yes. Thinks it's news that you would use a phony name to play blackjack, but there are some real legitimate issues. Number one, in collecting your winnings, did you use your real social security number for tax purposes? And number two, uh, the real issue is the fact that the chairman of your party and the head of your party, the governor, think you ought to consider pulling out of this because they they have reacted to this negatively. Well, I I appreciate the input from them, but uh, in all due respect. The first time a little mud flies, you don't run and take cover. You just face it. You, you explain. There's going to be, look, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a very heated race, probably one of the most exciting races or the most exciting race in the history of the state of Connecticut. There's going to be a lot of things said about all the candidates. There already has been a lot said about Mr. Lieberman, about Mr. Lamont. There's going to be a lot said about Mr. Schlesinger. This is going to be par for the course. If every time someone brings up something that is 
that has nothing to do with the law, that has nothing to do with anything other than trying to, by innuendo, smear someone, that we're going to have major press conferences, fine, I appreciate all of the publicity I will get. But there's going to be a lot of this as it comes down, and hopefully we're going to get into issues too, because that's very important. I think the people of the state of Connecticut deserve an airing of the issues, and there are vast differences between myself and Mr. Lieberman and Mr. Lamont, and they deserve an airing of those issues and how these candidates are going to solve the problems that are facing this country. Do you think, Alan, as the Alan? governor and the chairman don't think you're a strong enough candidate, they got somebody else in mind to run a, three, a potential three-way race. No one said that to me, and, 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 and frankly, and I don't, why would they I don't care. consider getting out? I think because of the fact, and there may be other reasons, I'm not going to go into it. I don't speak for the governor. You'll have to ask, ask her that. I'm very, I'm, I'm disappointed that she would make such a statement, and I'll leave it at that. I'm well, what about the Social Security issue? Yes. What about the Social Security number? Did you use your accurate Social Security number you don't, in your winning? Uh, well, I don't know, uh, for those of you who are not experienced in, in ever going to a gaming institution, when you play blackjack, you, or, or craps, or a slot machine, the only time, as I understand it, I, I don't ever play slot machines, uh, but, uh, or I play maybe, you know, once a year, um, if you win a jackpot, which I've never been fortunate enough to win, I've been told, I've been told that uh, they fill out some form with right. that. When you play table games, there are no forms to fill out. What you do, what you're supposed to do, and I'm sure most people don't, but I do, is you're supposed to keep track to see if you have any winnings over a year. And if you have winnings oh, over a year, right, above, because you cannot deduct your losses. So I have a methodology, actually, where I can tell if I have had a winning year. Unfortunately, I've never had a winning year, but I have a methodology so that I know, uh, and uh, I'll go into it if you want to, but it's, it's rather boring, but I have a methodology to know if I ever do have a winning year. So, so it's not like winning the jackpot at the slots. They don't ask for your social security number if you That's win correct. at the table. No. But, but, you, but you kept track You're of it. You're supposed to keep track of it. Right. Now, some people, I guess if you were perfect, you would keep track exactly how much money you brought that day, exactly how much money you came home to. You would figure out your plus or minus, and you would keep a ledger you on never every had single a plus time. year anyway. Exactly. I never had a plus year. I, I have a very sophisticated way that's simple. It's sophisticated but very simple, which is that I know what I start the year with, and then I know what I end the year with, and then I know if I've had a game. Alan, if I can interrupt your one on one remark, uh, have you talked personally? <laughs> have you talked personally with uh, uh, the governor about this, or personally with George Gallo? I've talked to George Gallo. I haven't talked to the governor about it. And do you think that he has uh, he is trying to uh, move some potentially stronger candidate into the race instead of you? Never. Didn't even come up. As a matter of fact, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, he feels I'm a very strong candidate. But have you been formally asked to, to drop out of the race? No. Have they asked you to? I only know what, uh, what was in the paper this morning. So, so what else, I guess, I'm asking you to speculate here, but it's different if, like, the Democrats were calling you to drop out of the race. But you have people in your own party saying, we think you should drop out of this race. Yeah, well, uh, the Democrats uh, are saying a lot of things about each other these days, about who should be on what line and who should drop out of the primary, so that's not a true statement. There's, uh, there's plenty of that going on right now. But uh, I, I have to say that, uh, you know, the, the governor is entitled to her opinion, but uh, what I read in the paper is that she told me to consider it. I mean, what is to say? You consider it? I think it's absurd. It's absurd. The, you know, again, if someone, if someone tries to smear you, and, you know, I've been in politics for 20 years. You know, you know give me your best shot. I, I'm, I'm here. I just would like to talk about the issues. This has nothing to do with the campaign. It has nothing to do with any wrongdoing. It's just an attempt by innuendo to smear my name. And, and he, in his, in, his, in his attempt to smear me, talks about when I was a state legislator. Now, you've got to ask yourself, you know, if there was any wrongdoing, or if there's anything wrong with this, which there isn't even on its face, then why wasn't it brought to my attention and the press's attention 15 years ago? Good question, right? Only because now I'm running for the United States Senate and this gentleman who tries to make a name for himself. I mean, we're going to give you, we're going to give you some of these, uh, these emails that he gives away. He's got so many emails uh, listing, if you take a look here, that you can hardly fit them on a sheet. He, he emails the world with his accusations. And this particular one has, doesn't have anything to do with me, by the way. And this is this week. This is only this I week. Understand. 
saying that, but I still don't understand then if, if, it's, if it is what you're saying it is, why would the governor say she's so disturbed by this if it's just some guy who's got an axe to grind? I'll, I'll leave that to your discretion. You know, in, in politics, there's always ulterior motives, and, and you know, I'm not going to question the governor on whatever she's thinking. I'm just very disappointed that she would even make a statement like that, especially without even discussing it with me. Well, you throw out a statement like in politics, there are always ulterior motives when we're asking questions about the governor. Do you think the governor has ulterior motives here? And I if have, so, what do you think they are? I have no idea. I have no idea. You'll have to ask her. Uh, you'll have to ask her. Do you think this I, will cost you votes? No, I think, I think this is going to heighten my, uh, my name recognition. <laughs> do you think that the, uh, think that the uh, by the way, every phone call I've received so far and every email I've received has been in support of me. They think this whole thing is so silly. Do you think the governor is super sensitive because of the so-called Moody matter? I, I'm not going to comment on that. I, I mean, look, I'm running for the United States Senate. This has nothing to do with state government. I'm in my own race. I have a very heated race. There's going to be a lot of things flying. And to be perfectly honest, I don't see why the governor needs to weigh in on anything in the United States Senate race. She has a lot on her plate with the state of Connecticut, and, I'm, and she's doing a great job as governor. I hope she continues to do a great job in governor, and she leaves the United States Senate race to me. Has anyone in the party to this point suggested that you, aside from the governor in this issue, suggested that you uh, pull out and uh, to give make way for a stronger candidate? Has anybody talked to you about that? The party? opposite. The opposite. They've all said, hang in there and, 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 and don't let them uh, throw something at you. And, uh, and, and actually, a lot of anger from Republicans saying that, you know, the, the, here we go, we don't have enough teamwork. And you know what? I'm part of the team. I wish Jody Rell the best of luck. I'm go I, I have been on the, on the trail, you know, uh, uh, supporting her, telling the people her story, saying how great a job she's doing. I am a team player, and I've helped all the other column, uh, other excuse me, other other candidates on the ticket. I'm going to continue to do that, and uh, I'm a team player. And I hope that I hope the governor sees that uh, she wants a great team, and that we're going to all work together, and that she's going to be very proud of the positions I take and the solutions I come come up with to solve the problems that are facing the United States right now, which, by the way, are a lot more pressing than my wampum card. Alan, 1994, there was uh, John Lowell was running for governor, and just about every news conference, uh, he had to answer a, d a question about domestic a domestic problem that might have occurred. Uh, and that happened constantly. I mean, he, he was uh, unable really to talk about issues. Do you see this coming up at virtually every news conference, every event you're at between now and election day? And if so, what coming up? how do you combat this issue? And, and I how can't do you imagine that? why a wampum card at a casino from 15 years ago would be an issue in the United States Senate race. I, I, I mean, you know, that's up to the media and how they play it. Uh, I don't see it as, as an issue. I, I wouldn't do this press conference today if I wasn't uh, getting so many phone calls. So, I mean, it, it's not an issue in the race, period. Uh, is there any, can you think of any other reason why the governor would jump in with both feet based on what is before us today? I don't know if she jumped in on both feet. She didn't even call me. Well, she was she's saying publicly that a candidate for that her party's nominee for U.S. Senate should reconsider his candidacy. So, uh, I, you know, th that's a pretty good shove. Um, give us give us a wider context here, based on what's in the public record. As you say, this is, uh, you know, you used a, a different name on a wampum card. Is there any other concerns that you think the governor has that would? cause her to take this rather strong step. Not, not to my knowledge. Uh, you know, uh, I, I'm not going to speculate any, on anything. You, you, did, you did know that they actively recruited somebody else before they came to you, the Republicans. I heard a lot of names being mentioned. Some of them were running. They endorsed me. There's unity in the party. I hope there's unity with the governor. Right. Everyone I've spoken with. I had a tremendous reception last night at the, uh, at the Wallingford uh, Republican Town Committee. Every single member took signs and bumper stickers. They're all excited about this race. Mr. Schlesinger, just reiterate then, it sounds like you're saying, no way, no how, you are staying in this race until November, period. Absolutely. You're not going Absolutely. anywhere. And, and, and we're going to, you know, there's going to be mud slinged at, at, uh, at Lieberman, Lamont, uh, uh, myself. I mean, you know, I take it as a compliment. Because I, th I think, actually, this shows at how much of a horse race this is going to be. That people know that my candidacy is extremely viable and that I have a hell of a shot of winning this race. And that this is, this is a manifestation of that.
We're here because you're looking at your potential next United States Senator. That's why we're here today. Actually, no, this one does have my name. But on, but the one I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find any, any I mean, we're talking you're about something for no cards that don't. I have no idea. I don't have any cards. The only cards I have say, say Alan Schlesinger. And again, I have played so infrequently in the last few years. I used to have more time. I've had a very busy legal practice. I haven't had the time for recreation in any form. And so I haven't really done it. You know, these are the type of things. You throw them out, you lose them, you, you don't even know. They're, it's, it's the same as my stop and shop cards. I've lost my stop and shop cards, too. I mean, I don't, I don't consider these. These are not credit cards. These are not ID cards. These are something you use so that, so that they, they give you promotions at gaming facilities. Can you explain it's, exactly why you did register one under the name? I did, I did explain that already. You explained that already. I said I wanted to protect my privacy. There's identity theft. We're dealing with a sovereign nation that doesn't even uh, go by the laws of the state of Connecticut or the United States. And I was a member of the legislature, and I didn't want anyone to believe that I would have any bias because I actually enjoy playing at one of their gaming facilities. If you it's were so unlucky that. gambling, always losing, what makes you think you're going to be lucky in November? Uh, <laughs> now that's the first good question I've heard. We have you to help. You know what? You know what? It's like the unlucky in love thing. <laughs> Alan, what are you doing today, aside from the press conference, to sort of uh, shore up your support or reassure people that this is not something that should derail you? Look, just like I said, I'll be here as long as you want for any questions. No, I mean, are you, are you uh, making calls to other party leaders? Are you doing any kind of one-on-one -on -one stuff, you know, to say, no. hey, the governor, I believe the governor jumped I don't see it as an issue. People have been calling me, th thanking me for, for being strong. Thanking me for, for, for not caving for the first time someone throws something at me. And uh, I said, of course not. I mean, you know, again, I've been in office for 20 years. I've been mayor of a city. You want to get tough, come to the city of Derby sometime and see how politics is played there. This is nothing. Have you requested a meeting with the governor? No. I don't see it as an issue. If she wants to meet with me, I'll meet with her anytime she wants. I love seeing Jody. What about George Gallo? He's another one. Yeah, I've talked to jo George a number of times, and if he wants to meet with me, I'll meet with him. I'll meet with any Republican. As a matter of fact, I'll meet with any constituent. I want to meet everybody. Anytime, anywhere, any place, as long as my, my, uh, my schedule allows, I want to meet everyone in the state of Connecticut. And uh, I'll devote as much time as you feel is necessary to this issue or to hopefully, and no one's asked me any questions about the issues that are facing the state of Connecticut in the United States. I was hoping maybe we get a few questions on what's important to the voters of Connecticut, rather than my uh, my uh, a promo card from 1992. Are you releasing your uh, uh, income tax form? Yes, we're trying to see what form they uh, that it's going to be appropriate, but that will be released. Alan, was there a problem with identity theft in 1992? Yes, yes, so there always has been. There always has been, to my knowledge, ever since uh, uh, credit cards have become so uh, widely dispersed. And, uh, and, and, and that was just one of the reasons. It, wa it wasn't only that reason. I just didn't want to be bothered. It was a new phenomenon. You know, we just had, the, the casino just had come in. I didn't know what the, the cards were being used for. I, I had no idea what they want. They just wanted everyone's name kind of on the list. And you know, uh, I, I for, you know, and for the public, I urge you to shy away from just giving out your identity very freely. I think it's very dangerous. And, uh, and, you know, especially where, you know, a, you know, gaming facilities, you don't know who's getting it or how they're getting it. And, uh, you know, again, with a sovereign nation, you should be very careful. Alan, can you do us a quick favor and just hold that card up in your left hand the way you did before? I see if you have a shot of it in your hand. That's it. Yeah. 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 When was the last time you actually went down? To, uh, to um, I can't actually remember the date. It's been that long ago. I think it was last year sometime. And I think that I, only once last year, uh, if I did. But you, you do like to gamble, obviously. Occasionally, yeah, like most people. I, I see a lot of senior yeah. citizens. When I go there, I see a multitude of senior citizens. I see people from across the state. But obviously, based on the numbers, I, it's the majority of the people in the state of Connecticut. Well, yeah. uh, but you don't, you don't think you have a gambling problem. I, I think I go less than most people. And no, the only, the only problem I have is with people blowing uh, wampum cards out of proportion. <laughs>